From 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.5 seconds with a top speed of 320 kilometers per hour. The AC Schnitzer GP3 is as much at home on country roads as it is on the racetrack. The 10-cylinder 552 horsepower car is a real workhorse. A real Schnitzer BMW. Heiner Vogel owns the Schnitzer Tuning Company. He says his company believes in taking racing technology and putting it on the streets. And he adds that the concept is the best way to show what is available in new materials and technology. BMW has been in close cooperation with the Schnitzer Motorsport Company for two decades. Schnitzer organized a lot of races for BMW and won the 1999 24-hour Le Mans for the Bavarians. That experience gives the Aachen-based tuning company the know-how to build sports prototypes and gives concrete shape to the visions the company has. Michele Viandante is the head of design at AC Schnitzer. The GP3 started on a blank piece of paper. The basis was the 3 Series BMW. The Andante says the car cannot be boring. By no means should it pass unnoticed. People have to see it and talk about it, whether it's positive or negative, but it cannot be boring. Manfred Volgarten makes sure the designs stay in the realm of the possible. The former race driver tested his shock absorbers and stabilizers on the racetrack after every design advance. Their aim is to build a sporty chassis which Joe Public feels happy steering. Volgarten says hard suspension does not make a fast car. He says suspension needs some play out on the road to give the driver a feel for the car. It may sound crazy, but out on an uneven surface a car which seems to float would be ideal. Changes to the engine control have eked more power out of the BMW M5 series engine. AC Schnitzer offers engine tuning for almost all BMW models and combines them with spoilers for better aerodynamics. And chrome pipes are the bling in the end of a completely overhauled exhaust system which adds power too. Well, Garden says the whole package has to make sense. He says you can't just put any exhaust on anywhere. The sound and the optical package have to be right. And the cockpit has not spared Schnitzer's brand of tuning. Every model has its own style. Of course, the Schnitzer 3 Series is more square edged than the 7 Series. The aerodynamic details, all hand worked, have an elegance of their own. And none of the Schnitzer models have the same spoiler. The AC Schnitzer prototypes are all approached from different angles. The GP3 has the special ability to switch from petrol to LPG without losing power. The car set a world speed record for LPG powered cars. Vogel says every car makes a new mark, and he keeps an eye on the market and listens to his customers. He believes the issue of ecology will be more important in the future. Driving fast and clean with a GP3, even in the field of alternative technology, AC Schnitzer will be putting the pedal to the metal, moving forward into new areas. Porsche has given its Cayman a facelift. The second generation of the mid-engine sports car will hit the market at the end of February. Aficionados will notice the new front with its big lamps, while the taillights feature LED technology. The engines are all new. They pack a bigger punch than their predecessors, plus they're estimated to produce a 16% improvement in terms of fuel economy. Here's the new Renault Megane Coupe. After recently presenting the five-door Megane to the public, Renault has now unveiled the three-door version. The only thing the five-door and the new Coupe have in common is the hood, the front fenders, and the headlights. The flashy front combined with chrome finished air inlets give the car an aggressive sporty face. The low roof and the striking rear add to the car's charm. It comes with air conditioning, an MP3 compatible CD radio and fog lamps as standard.
This is what a car looks like when it drives by itself. Cameras, laser, radar, and sonar sensors allow the vehicle to quite literally form its own picture of its surroundings. The car, which its makers call Carolyn, is not about to collide with anything or anyone, even while moving quite fast on its own. The robots were put through their paces in the Urban Challenge competition at the former George Air Force Base in California. The prize money ran into the millions of dollars put up by the U.S. Department of Defense. The Passat Carolyn and the Passat Junior were both entered. These mass-produced cars were stuffed full of electronic gadgetry, which was meant to allow them to navigate around a typical U.S. town. It's harder than you think. Trying to avoid a competitor, Carolyn ran into a ditch. Junior made it to second place. The successful team had reason to celebrate, but is this the future? Cars that can get through the traffic without our help. The head of firm research at Volkswagen says, new technology for us often comes into being when particular key technologies are developed for other uses. We have a clear vision of wanting to take the pressure off the driver in cases when he is not the master of the situation. And the other positive side effect is that in those places where driving really is no longer fun, when it's a hassle, when you can switch on an autopilot that will take over the job so that you can devote yourself to more useful or entertaining things. So the idea is that we keep driving. But when it becomes a bore, like long Autobahn drives can be, the assistance system can take over the dull bit of the job. It regulates speed, checks the distance to other vehicles, and can overtake them if necessary. But solutions are needed for city driving as well. Parked in? Not a problem. Your assistant can maneuver the car out of the jam. There's often little space in multi-story car parks, like the one simulated here. And to help there, engineers are working on systems that can monitor sideways distances to walls or supporting pillars before the paint gets scratched. Beeping, flashing, or even talking, assistance systems are increasingly an annoyance to drivers. It's a problem the developers are working on. VW's research head says what you see here is a permanent monitor in your peripheral vision. A white bar here on the left side telling you that you may have to brake, which turns into a warning. The sharper you have to brake, the stronger the warning. If the distance to the car in front of him is safe, it shows up green. Some of the approaches shown here will never make it to the market, either because they are too expensive, too complex, or present a legal problem. But while there are dreams to be fulfilled, there will be autos built just for the kicks. Like the Bugatti Veyron with 1,001 horsepower.